Alright, this is Stirfy Squadron 53. It is continuing on about a billion ongoing plot lines and subplots. But mainly, as the cover shows, we're back to the Evil Monster Society. They are a group of villains who beat up the remaining Justice Society of superheroes. And as you can see, here they are ganning up against Superman, who was absent from that other issue. That previous issue, issue 51, it was really good. And you would hope that finally following up on that story would likewise be good. But it's a bit of a shambles. The Evil Monster Society is comprised of a bunch of really obscure golden age super villains that you probably didn't know and haven't even seen before but they are being led by Mindworm from Captain Marbles, the real one, Biffy Baston and here they are breaking into a prison to free someone and recruit them as a new member for the team before they can do that though Superman shows up to stop them this is golden age Superman, my favourite Superman he starts fighting the evil monster society. And this bit, it would be a lot better if we just saw more of it. It's over very quickly. Superman, he's defeated straight away and the team get another minor ad villain to join them. This is Puppetmon. He is one of the Dark Masters and another lazy excuse for me to name a character after a Digimon. I didn't like this though, considering the evil monster society, we have already seen they're capable of beating up a bunch of heroes. I don't see the point why they're adding another obscure villain to their ranks. It's really needless. The team have already been built up and established well. I mean, they just beat Superman up. What does adding Puppetmon to their team bring to the story? Then we have got stuff about dissent within the group. We start setting up the idea of a mutiny against Mindworm. Then Superman, he gets to a big meeting of heroes. And we finally got some of the actual Stirfy Squadron. We've also got members of the Justice Society of Superheroes. The ones who are still around. Because what has happened is another plotline entirely. Most of the Justice Society of Superheroes, these ones pictured here, they have been kidnapped by evil Nazis and they have been fired off into space with Nazi science. And this is, this is just ridiculous. The amount of random plot lines going on in this book. We have got this here, the Evil Monster Society, how they beat up the remaining members of the Justice Society of Superheroes. Then we have got our Dr. Fates, he went missing because him and a big statue man teleported away to the moon during a fight. Then we have got this stuff, the Christmas on Infinite Earths tie-in with Allbrand and Harbinger. And then another plot line with some of the Stirfy Squadron and Green Lanterns, the John Scott version. They went off to another reality. There's far too much going on. Any one of these stories would probably be better served if they were not competing with each other just for page time. And it only gets worse because, well, here is some more characters to dump into the plot. Then the evil monster society, the big statue man, he comes back and they overthrow Mindworm. A uh, big statue man, he is now the leader of the team and we're just done with Mindworm now. He runs away and that is it for his involvement in this story or this book. And rather than continue on with this evil monster society plotline, instead we get yet another fucking plotline. This is a direct tie-in with Christmas on Infinite Earths. And with all these characters to keep track of, it becomes even harder now because we have got like 
current versions of Green Lanterns, John Scott and the Flask with the Funny Art and the Surviving Justice Society of Superheroes characters. Uh, what has happened is Liberty Beale and Fast Man, they have been sent to the future. So have some of the other Stirfy Squadron members. They have been sent to the future to take part in a wider crossover. And this is just a mess. It's like the book is having a personality crisis. And obviously none of this Christmas on Infinite Earth stuff has really been set up in this issue. It expects you to already be reading that series. So as a single issue, this utterly fails. It makes no sense at all. If you were just buying Stirfy Squadron, you would not have a clue what was happening here. And then we gone off on yet another plotline with Fast Man teaming up with a group of villains. This is just a total mess. I mean, you've got two different versions of the same characters and stuff. You could easily see these manic plots and its seemingly infinite cast of characters as being some like really layered and intensely constructed world, but it's anything but that. It's haphazard story and its cast that jump around every few pages, they're only a detriment to everything the book has Ganon for it. This is another disappointing issue, so... It's getting a well-deserved seven thumbs up.